What's going on guys, Frankie here, Frankie's Film of Let's Talk Broncos, coming at you with another episode of my Frankie's Film Gold Star Film Review Film Breakdown series. This week we're going to be looking at and highlighting some of the players and coaches, I guess, from the Broncos win over the Packers last week, 1917. Uh, got out to a little bit of an early lead early on, weren't able to kind of overcome some red zone penalties and just red zone issues in general, and then the Packers scored a couple fluky touchdowns to make this one close, but on the offensive side of the ball, Sean Payton called a masterful game, uh, we're gonna look at some of the run concepts he was busting out, and then Javante, Javante Williams is back ladies and gentlemen, he had an excellent afternoon breaking tackles, having some big runs, showing off some really impressive bursts, so we're gonna dive into those guys on the offensive side of the film, let's get into it. First play we're going to be looking at for the run game, it's on the first drive, it's second and ten, and they're in some 12 personnel, and this one's going to be a bit of a table setter that Sean Payton's been setting up for the past few weeks. They're just going to run a bit of this naked boot concept, you're going to see Adkins come across the formation just run into the flat. Russell Wilson does a nice job getting the pass off with the sidearm throw, but this play doesn't go for a big game, but you'll see later on how he uses this play to kind of open up the run game. Speaking of opening up the run game, later on that same drive we've got a first and 10 out of some 21 personnel. We've got a similar look to the last play, except this time Manhurts is going to chop block. We're going to get the handoff to Javante Williams. Little Jordan Humphrey and Bulls are going to do a great job sealing off the second level defender. And then Russ with a great ball fake and Burton doing a good job kind of showing his hands and flashing that they might be passing. Does a great job pulling two defenders out of position and it just leaves a wide open lane for Javante Williams to burst through. Very next play for the offense, we've got a first and 10 out of some 12 personnel, and they're going to be running some motion Y lead. Basically, we're going to see Nate Adkins come across the formation, and him and Adam Troutman are going to widen out this defensive end. Then we're going to have Ben Powers with a grown man block on Kenny Clark. You're going to see uh, then Lloyd Cushenberry continuing his excellent season, just flying to the second level, getting a good hand on Quay Walker, and then you got Jaleel McLaughlin getting untouched and uphill for 9 yards. Next drive, we've got the Broncos up 3 0 in its first and 10. They're coming out in some 12 personnel with Quinn Bailey as the eligible tackle, and they're running some outside zone. Look at what the Manhurts motion does to the Green Bay front seven, though. You see them all kind of shift down a gap, and this gives the Broncos blockers all some advantageous leverage angles. And we've got Ben Powers getting held here, so we've got Javante kind of getting one on one with Quay Walker, but he can just make anybody miss in the NFL, dude. He is absolutely ridiculous. Finds space and creates a 10 yard run on top of the penalty. A couple plays later, we've got a second and five out of 11 personnel, and we've just got a beautiful duo rep. The motion again creates such easy blocking angles for everybody. Sean Payton is just cooking at this point. McGlinchey folds Kenny Clark like a folding chair, and uh, Chris Manhurts and Brandon Johnson do an excellent job on this insert block of kind of taking out the two guys. Just a well-blocked play by everybody. Javante Williams, if he doesn't get brought down by this arm tackle, is probably still running to the house. Next drive, Broncos leading 6 0, and don't adjust your monitors. That's right, we've got a second and 31. The Broncos are in some 11 personnel, and they're running a draw. We've got another fantastic reach block from Lloyd Cushenberry on the second level. Just does a good job getting a piece of the linebacker, but this play is just all about Jaleel McLaughlin. The, the combination of speed and acceleration and vision that this dude possesses is truly special. He's a very fun player for Denver, and he's only getting better with every touch. Into the second half now, Broncos lead 9-0, we've got a first and 10, Denver's out of some 21 personnel, and we've got basically another one of the same concepts as earlier with the little flat runner, we've got the crossing cut blocker. This time, the play fake from Russ and Burton does such a good job that Rashawn, Gary, and Quay Walker basically completely take themselves out of the play. Quinn Miners and Mike McGlinchey double team the defensive tackle into next week, and we've just got a big run from Javante, he gets the stiff arm and he's off to the races. Almost had a touchdown here again, but you know, guys able to bring him down in that third level. Very next play, we got a Broncos first and 10, they're running some more 13 personnel with Quinn Bailey as the tackle eligible, they're running some more weak zone, and we just see Lloyd Cushenberry and Mike McGlinchey continuing to climb to the second level and finish blocks, and then we've just got a great run from Javante Williams, look at the burst here man, again this is a guy, multiple ligament tears, 10 months later, 12 months later, however many months we're at, he's doing this already, just beautiful to see. Next up, first and 15, we've got some 12 personnel, and Denver's going to be running some lead counter. 
There really isn't too much here. We just got a five yard game, but I was just really excited to get to see Ben Powers finally get to be used on a pull. Uh, we haven't really gotten to see too much of it this year, and I think that was one of the things he excelled at when he was playing in Baltimore. So yeah, more Ben Powers pulling. He annihilates people. Late in the game as the Packers took the lead 17-16 and we've got a gotta have a third and one for the Broncos. They're in some 11 personnel and we just get a great tendency break from Peyton. On these third and shorts all year he's been running the fullback dives, the sneaks to Russ, you know a lot of stuff straight up the middle. This time he just kills the play and we get a nice toss to the outside. Look at the blocks here from Manhurts and Miners, those are what I really want to highlight. Miners does a great job turning Rashawn Gary inside and then Chris Manhurts man, I just love the guy. The running game continues to look better and better every single week, and you could argue it is easily the best unit on this entire roster right now. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, our gold star player this week, it's going to be Baron Browning, coming back from meniscus surgery in the preseason. This is a guy that had really high expectations coming into this year. I know everybody was super excited. He's shown such flashes of the incredible potential he had, and even though he was limited on the snaps he had, I believe he only got to play 16 total on the day. He still flashed that insane potential he has his entire career, and even in my personal opinion, had his pa best pass rush rep to date. So, let's take a look. First play of the day for Baron Browning in the defense, we've got the Packers in the third and seven, and Broncos are going to be deploying their new NASCAR package. NASCAR packages are a little bit weird, they were popularized by the Giants, but basically we're going to have one defensive lineman with his hand in the dirt, that's going to be Zach Allen, and then we're going to have a bunch of stand-up rushers just playing all around him. We have Jonathan Cooper, Baron Browning, Nick Benito, you're going to see Drew Sanders mixed in there a little bit, Alex Singleton, but it's just going to create a lot of chaos for the offensive line, they're going to be lined up from a bunch of different alignments, but... Look at the job Baron Browning does long-arming this offensive tackle. He borderline forklifts him right into the lap of Jordan Love, who's able to get a pass away. Next, we got a first and ten, and the Packers are running a bit of the naked boot action that we were just talking about so much with Denver, but Baron Browning is just too fast to leave unblocked for your quarterback. It's a dangerous move, and right here, he gets another pressure and forces Jordan Love into a back foot throw that still gets completed but ends up going straight out of bounds, but it really just shows the benefit of having two really fast guys on the edge like Browning and Benito. These pressures really affect quarterbacks much quicker than some of these other guys would. Next up, we've got a third and seven for Green Bay. Denver's back in their NASCAR look, and here it is. The mother of all ghost moves from Baron Browning. If you don't know, a ghost move is where you bait the long arm and you dip the shoulder underneath. It was popularized by Von Miller, and right here, Baron Browning, I'll be quite honest, he looks like Von Miller. He looks like Von Miller mixed with Gumby. The fact that he's able to stick the landing on this shoulder dip is absolutely absurd, it's freakish, and it's beautiful. And I want more. I want more right now. Final play of the day, and it's not going to live up to the hype of the last play, but we got a pass breakup for Baron Browning. They're going to be running some man, and he does a nice job just getting his hands in the passing lane. Knocks the pass down from Jordan Love on the slant, and there you go. And there it is. And there it is. Packers Broncos in the books. Broncos jump up to 2-5. and five. Some of you will be happy about that. Some of you are devastated. I'm happy I got to watch a week of some fun film. It was actually pretty enjoyable this week. Sean Payton, starting to cook a little bit? Looking like, looking like truly the elite play caller we were all hoping for? Love it, man. The run game's effective. Baron Browning looks like he's picking up where he left off, just making the same type of explosive, flashy plays as we came to expect and love out of him. And yeah, man, looking forward to next week against the Chiefs. I think this team, you know... I don't want to say they're going to win, but, you know, this team has a better shot than a lot of people are giving them credit for. They always play the Chiefs tough, and right now, they're coming off a game where they had their best performance. I think that the offense helped the defense, I think the defense helped the offense, and the special teams have been great all year. So let's see if they can keep it going into Kansas City. This has been Frankie's Film. Thanks for stopping by. Like and subscribe everything. Catch you guys later.